What's up everyone and welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we're starting another Keyforge tournament, this time it's Archon format. And it's brought to you by these awesome supporters at Back to Channel over at patreon.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. Thank you so much for the support. Thanks to you guys, these videos are coming to you. Uh, we got Melanie on the left, we got Adam on the right. This is at Board Games Central in downtown Hamilton, Ontario. It was an intro tournament, we had five players show up, some new players. So I'm warning you now, there may be some mistakes made in these videos from this series, but the game is new at this point. This was The game had been out for a week at, at this point. So please do not tell me that the video is garbage because there's mistakes made. I'm using these tournament videos as a teaching tool. Hopefully some new players can learn. So feel free to leave in the comments below any mistakes you see made, if any cards are played wrong or whatever. So going forward, people watching these videos in the future, people learning or maybe want to go out to their first tournament or, or just getting into Keyforge can read those comments below on YouTube and see the mistakes maybe that are made and how the cards were misplayed and we can, we can correct it going forward. So we have an Ovu Archaeologist on the left. That's just a, an action archive and a card, I believe that guy is. we got Succubus out there. Terror actually being played on the right side, getting his ability, since there's no Amber across the table, he gains two. And then we got this, um, I forget what the name of that creature is there on the bottom, but I know it's the before fight, you get to target a different creature and you damage that creature instead in a fight, but it takes the hit back from the creature it's actually fighting. I'll try to find the name of it here. It is a, a Gabos Long Arms, is what it is. And we got some stealing happening with double urchins coming into play on a Shadows turn there for Melanie on the left. So she's up to two Amber. And we got... So the two Amber is now gone from the player on the right. He is using dice. So that's another complaint I have. Players using dice. They're not supposed to be using dice, but this was an intro tournament. And FFG can't seem to keep enough core sets flowing to meet demand. So you can't really can't really uh, blame people for not having uh, tokens uh, right here to start. So remember, this was a tournament from a couple weeks ago. Uh, I know more people are getting a hold of tokens now. People are making custom tokens and that kind of thing to meet the demands of the field of players but uh at this point in time some players are just using dice and i feel they should be okay to do that as long as it's just at like casual tournaments or game nights and stuff but we haven't really gotten any high level tournaments going yet so we got a site mechanic on the flank which means keys are minus one for both players and we got a wild wormhole generating another amber here it's going to play the top card of his deck no matter what it is And it's a Schuler, but there is not four Amber across the table, so he's not stealing anything. But another Disc Creature on the board. And another Titan Mechanic on the flank. So keys are only four costs right now for both players. Which is interesting. But both players sitting at two Amber, so no forging keys yet. And if you're new here to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe. It's free. It really supports the channel. If you want to see more Keyforge videos, hit that like button on these Keyforge videos. I got plenty more. Check out the Keyforge playlist at Rob's Gaming Table on YouTube. And we got Naughty the Thief on the board. Got an Urchin Reaping and another Urchin Reaping. So four Amber now on the left side. She is officially in check thanks to those two Titan mechanics being on the flank. But I'm going to bet you they won't be on the flank for much longer uh, at that rate. So looks like that's it. Passing it over to Adam on the right here for his turn. So it sounds like we have Dis named by Adam. He's going to use Gabos uh, to... F He's going to do the before fight, which targets the ar archaeologist or archivist or whatever he is. And then... Uh, but he's going to fight the urchin, who's going to deal one damage back. But he's elusive, so no damage happens. Yeah, no damage there on either side. But the five damage from that uh, long arms guy is going to hit the uh, Novu archaeologist or archivist or whatever he is and does damage him so you hear adam there saying elusive's been used up so now succubus is going to attack that urchin who's already been attacked once 
So Elusive no longer takes effect. One damage going back to Succubus. But Succubus is restricting the the hand limits of Melanie on the left to five right now. Terror's coming in on. Nobody. Yep. Elusive. I'll take two. Looks like uh, Naughty the Thief, which elusive, okay. of course, uh, happens there. So neither neither character takes any damage in the fight. Yep. And Schuler's going to come in and attack again, which of course is going to hit him and take two damage back and destroy the thief there. And the Terror coming in, of course, not hitting his ability this time, since there's Amber across the table, and his opponent's Amber Pool. And we see Adam on the right's board going really wide in creatures here. He is uh, running a very creature-heavy deck, as he'll state. I remember seeing it uh, during the tournament. It gets pretty wide here. And we got a Dominator coming in from Mars on the left side there, getting a Jammer pack thrown on him. So keys are plus two, and he comes into play stunned. She will gain another Amber there off that Jammer pack being put into play. And I do appreciate all the support, all the nice comments uh, from these videos and the commentary. I appreciate it. Uh, I do hope these are helping you guys out, either entertaining you or helping people see what, you know, what's happening right now in the tournament scene, and uh, you know, help help teach people who might be wanting to come out and play at tournaments. And it's also, I think, nice to see people actually playing the physical game. Uh, not to knock the Crucible online, but uh, people playing on computer platforms where the computer's doing a lot of the work for you. Uh, you know, it's not like, it's not how it's going to be really at a tournament. I, I don't usually play online card games, but uh, I figure there's a need for some physical games seeing, being played from tournaments with some commentary on them. So that's, that's why, I'm, why I'm here doing this. I feel it's different content from what's already out there. All right, so we got the Grey Monk hitting the board. He's giving a plus one armor to all his friendly creatures there, and he's got the re heal two damage from a creature. And we got Sequius coming off the board there, uh, just at the bottom of the camera. Uh, he's got a re capture one, I believe, and he's four two. So obviously having a lot of creatures got take hostages from Sanctum. That's the one who gets an amber off it, and uh, for each time he fights with a friendly creature they capture one but of course he didn't have any sanctum creatures ready to fight and he discarded two other cards there i'm not sure what they were he's just doing that to draw more sanctum it looks like so no titan mechanics on the flank right now so melanie's still not able to forge a key she's going to play fogify gains an amber off it uh forcing her opponent there not to be able to fight with creatures on the next turn and she's going to play lab work gain another amber and have to archive a card So even though lots of creatures on the right side and not so much of a big board on the left side there, we're seeing lots more Amber generated on the left side and stolen. Of course, the Shadows being in the deck. Um, even though you have a wall of creatures, doesn't mean you're necessarily forging keys quickly. As I've learned from playing many of Brobnar decks, uh, unless you get you know some war chests and stuff going. Or some uh, loot the bodies. So we got Library Access coming out here in this creature heavy deck. So let's see how many Logos cards he can play here. Oh, he's got a phase shift, allowing him to play a non-Logos card. He's going to draw off that, of course, from the library access. What's he going to throw into play here? Looks like he's got a handful of Sanctum cards and a discard there. So he's got... Uh, he's just played it off camera there, but I, I know what it is. I heard him say it's Lord Golgotha. Or Golgotha. <laughs> That's a Knight of Spirit. 5-2 is the stats. Uh, before fight, deal three damage to each neighbor of the creature Lord Golgotha fights. So a nice fighting creature out of Sanctum. So we have our first key forged of the game here on the left side of things. And five amber on the right on that die in the center there. So 
So even though Adam has this giant board, like I said, just having trouble getting the amber going, having trouble forging the keys so far. But I mean, he's setting up that if the board doesn't get reset, he could do some heavy reap turns and go crazy and catch up pretty fast, I'm sure. So I forget what this one's called. Something support, mothership support or something. Uh, so that's going to allow her to deal two damage for each friendly ready Mars creature. So she's going to hit something for two, but they're all they all armored up from Grey Monk. So only one more damage is going to get through the Succubus. So it's still one away from uh, being destroyed. It's not the most impactful card there. We got a Mind Warper hitting the board. He's another elusive creature. Lots of elusive creatures here in Melanie's deck. And she's going to discard that uh, Mars action that allows her to, like, uh, I think it's, like, discard any non-Mars creatures after revealing your hand. You get one Amber for each creature that's uh, discarded this way. I think that's what that one is. Sounds like we're over to Adam now for his turn. And it sounds like his name is Sanctum again. Blinding Light gaining an Amber for playing that. He's going to choose Mars and stun each creature from that house. Gets two creatures. So we see the Dominator is stunned back again after it just got rid of its stun. Yeah, shoulder armor going on Lord Golgotha there. Plus two, plus two uh, while he's on the flank. So he's now a 7-4. Uh, kind of gross. And he's throwing damage to the neighbors of the creature he's fighting. Here we go. We, he, he, Lord Golgoth is fighting the Dominator. So he's going to deal seven, but only six is going to get through because of the one armor on the Dominator. And the Dominator is going to hit back for nine, but four of that's going to be blocked, so I believe he only takes five damage. Oh, it sounds like he's got five armor. Oh, yeah, sorry. Plus one from the Grey Monk. So he's actually a seven, five. Wow. And then Sequiz is going to trade here, and they're just going to destroy each other to finish off. Oh, yes, he forgot the Lord Golgotha's ability that I just mentioned, how he should should hit each neighbor for three. So both the neighbors are destroyed. And then Sequiz is going to trade with the Dominator. And Melanie now has a clear board of creatures, no artifacts. But still up one key to zero. Grey Monk's going to do a reap. And he's going to heal two on Lord Golgotha. And thank you, Adam, for shuffling his board down here to make some room. Trying to keep it all on camera. I appreciate it. And two champion anaphils. I think that's how you pronounce that. And they're both taunt. 6-1. Big knight bodies. And he's at check with seven. No more jammer pack holding him back now. But uh, we'll see if some shadows yep. shenanigans happen here and steal some. Yeah, we hear her name shadows. Yeah, oh, it's just bad penny. Okay. Oh, but a bait and switch. A bait and switch stopping the key from Gene to Ungenerated here. And they're going to shuffle Amber uh, until she's up to, I believe, five. And he's down to four. Yes, that's correct. Okay, she's at five amber now. He's at four. He's not in key forging range. She is one off from forging her next key. Just like that. Bait and switch. BS. <laughs> you heard Melanie say there, who needs creatures to get amber? <laughs> I know her deck. It's, it is my wife playing on the left. If you guys haven't watched our live streams over at twitch.tv forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. 
Uh, you can see her there playing me quite often, live streaming. Uh, also, but some of those videos get archived here on YouTube. Uh, you can see those, like I said, under the Keyforge playlist. Uh, but this is my wife, Melanie. She's playing the, uh, I believe it's Rat Catcher Crow is the deck. Lots of Amber just generated from playing the cards. Plus, you get some Shadow Steel bait and switch and that. So, I can see how she's forging keys here without really having a board. I just don't think the deck has a reset. That's the only issue. I can probably actually look that up here. Uh, off the side. Uh, looks like the only close, the only thing close to a reset is the um, the bouncing death quark, which I mean you still have to have a lot of creatures out to start hitting their creatures. Bouncing death quark's a logos action. Play destroy an enemy creature and a friendly creature. You may repeat this effect as many times as you like, as long as it's possible to repeat the repeat the entire effect. So we see a everfessent principle there gaining a chain. So they're both uh, losing half their amber rounded down. So he's got some slowing mechanics in this deck also. And another third Titan mechanic. Wow. So keys to cost five right now. And it looks like he's going to reap with the Titan mechanic. And looks like reap with the other Titan mechanic. So he's up to four Amber. And that's it. So he's got one chain. I am really running out of room here. But he's slowing Melody down here from shooting to her next key. Well, I still have to be on camera. And he's trying to squish his giant board of creatures into the shot here. Okay. He's got, I think, 13 creatures on the board right now. So we got an urchin coming into play, stealing an amber. And we got a reap off a of bad penny. Four to three right now in the amber category. One key to zero. So we got Logos named from Adam on the right. Another Effervents and Principle. So he didn't lose his chain there, so I don't know if it hit him. But he's gaining another chain anyway off of playing another Effervents and Principle. I don't know if he missed it or not. So it looks like we got a Doc booked and put in at the top of the screen there. And we got another Wild Wormhole. So he gains an Amber, plays the top card of its deck. It's a Mind Barb, so you should get another Amber off that. And he's going to discard a card at random from Melanie's hand. So. Succubus locking her hand down a little bit there. Now Mind Barb's hitting the hand. That's going to slow her down, I'm sure. Maybe allow him to catch up here. And we got Titan Mechanic doing some reaping here. So four, four reaps going up to eight Amber there with all his, uh, with all his uh, Logos creatures on the line there that were readied. So he is now again at check. And he loses the... I don't know if he took the second chain or not there. I don't know if he just threw up to six. Hopefully, hopefully he realized he should, should have taken a second chain. And if he, I don't know if he missed the first one. but So we got a key abduction here, but it's just being played for an amber. She does not have enough amber and Mars creatures and all that to key, key cheat right now. And we got a combat pheromones put put into play. That's an omni. You can sack that to use up to two other Mars creatures, I believe. So you can, you can pop that on any any turn. And four amber on the left. Uh, now we're going out to Adam on the right. And he's gonna forge his first key. Two amber remaining. And he's actually gonna take a key off his keychain here and use those for his keys. So dice and real keys. This is this is the world we live in right now with a shortage on corsets. <laughs> Good life fitness promo there. I expect a check for that advertising. So he's he's, his, he's being punny here and naming this house as he points at the discard, which I don't think this is funny. All right, we got a pit demon out here at the top of the board. More creatures in the line here for Adam. 
And another Succubus. So he's got Library Accesses. Succubus's Life Ward to troll his opponent, stopping them from playing creatures next turn uh, after he pops it. It's an Omni. He's got great fighting creatures. Gateway to Disc being discarded. Of course, he doesn't want to pop that. I don't know a situation ever when he would want to pop it with this deck, having so many creatures. I guess if they were all stunned, maybe you'd want to pop them, or if your opponent, I guess, had a wall of creatures and they captured a bunch of amber from you, maybe you'd pop your board, but he obviously has enough creatures he could recover easily pretty quickly after that in a few turns, have a big board again, I think, but yeah, he just discards it. So he reaps with all of his disc creatures there, and he's back up to eight amber in check for forging his second key, and over to Melanie to play Dextra to capture one, bring him down to seven. And they're going to throw a die on uh, Dextra or Dexter or however you want to say it. To show the captured Amber from his opponent. And we got Dr. Escotero who comes out and gains a Amber for each key forged by his opponent. And it looks like his twin brothers hit the board. So he's just going to gain another Amber from that. Great later game card. I always seem to get those guys early in the game, and they're doing nothing for you. But if you can get them later after your opponent's forged a key or two, they're all right. So here we go. That bouncing death quirk I talked about earlier. So we're going to see her sack a creature, a friendly creature, then an enemy creature, and repeating it as long as she can keep repeating that effect. So let's see if she pops her whole board here to reduce the board. So a succubus goes away off a bad penny going back to hand. Great, great bad penny uh, card. And an urchin going away to pop the second succubus. And it looks like she's going to stop there and keep the Logos creatures on the board. And she finally gets to draw back up to six cards. And she's that check with six Amber. And we see the second key for here going down to one Amber from Adam. He's going to pull another key off his keychain. <laughs> This is the problem with the big board. He can easily just name Dis again. He can name Logos, even Sanctum. And he's just from Reaping alone from any of those factions he names. He's going to get like around five or six Amber. When it dies, I'll get my capture thing back. If I return it, will I get my capture thing back as well? So he's just asking if uh, if Dexter leaves play going back to hand, will he still get his Amber back? And Melanie correctly answers, yep. However he leaves play, destroyed, back to hand, purged, whatever, that Amber falls back off into the opponent's Amber pool. So we got a Mind Barb gaining an Amber, discarding a card at random from Melanie's hand here. And it looks like it's a Biomatrix backup. And we got a Fear played, returning a creature back to hand. So he gets an Amber that falls off Dextra. Dextra goes back to hand, so he'll be able to come out and capture one again, I'm sure. And we have a Rise to get the Disc creatures back to Succubi, or back in hand. And of course, I'm sure they'll be played out this turn. Since he's on a this turn, gains a chain for a rise. And there's Succubus locking down the hand back to four cards max. And he's going to reap for five off his ready disc creatures and putting himself back to eight. And Melanie's going to forge her second key though. So they're tied two keys a piece here. But does she have a way to pull him off of that eight amber in check? Can she get another grabber jammer out there? Uh, and steal one. I don't I think she can do both those in the same turn. Uh, no worries, Adam. No editing. Yeah. It's all good. We can we can I figure out what's going on here on your board. I mean, it's a little messy, a little overwhelming. I should have zoomed the camera out a little more. I didn't know this was going to happen, but I definitely appreciate both players for playing on camera and being good sports. And uh, yeah. Yeah, so maybe don't show up to a tournament without a reset in your deck uh, if you have the choice. Uh, if there's decks like this running around. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's not the worst. I mean, it doesn't have any really loss or steal. That's a little steal in the disc, but so far from what we see. All right, Dexter is coming back into play, capturing one, bringing him down to seven. But uh, it doesn't look like enough to put off from the key generation. And I think he accidentally put the die at two there on Dexter. It should just be one. And a third Dr. Escoterra coming into play. He's getting two this time. 
But Melanie, I don't know if she's going to get into forging range for her turn either. Because if she can't <laughs> shut it down, if she can't shut him down from forge the key, then forge one on her turn. Uh, I don't think she has a chance here. She has one amber sitting across the board on the Dextra. Uh, but uh, she's going to have to get that back by destroying him. And she could fight with the Dr. Escoterra, but he'll just go back to the top of the deck. Probably come back out, do it again, capture it again. So Dextra can be annoying on both sides of the board. It sucks that he clogs up your draw, but it sucks for your opponent to get rid of him. He's just going to come back and do the same thing. And take an amber away from you, most likely. And that's going to be it. Melanie does not have the answer to get him off Forge the Key. So congrats to Adam on that one there. Thank you for watching. And we'll have more tournament videos coming up on the channel. I have a few other tournaments in the hopper that I've been to and recorded videos from. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.